Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, is an underdiagnosed and undertreated condition with the potential to cause significant challenges in everyday life for those affected. In society, a social stigma attributed to ADHD exists, with children being labelled as badly behaved or stupid. For many, ADHD continues in adulthood, resulting in workplace challenges due to the lack of attention, impulsivity and restlessness. An increased awareness and acceptance of ADHD is needed, ensuring early diagnosis and support for those with the condition. In this video, we will break down ADHD, so let's talk mental health. I'm Dr. Hart Pinto, and in this series, we aim to break down the social barriers of mental health. At JHP Medical, we make weekly information videos designed to increase awareness and help you better understand your medical condition. So if you find this video helpful, subscribe, click the notification bell and the like button to support us in helping you. Okay, so what is ADHD? ADHD is a neurodevelopmental condition which shows its first symptoms in childhood. The condition was initially thought to exclusively affect children with little to no impact later in life. However, we now know this not to be true. And where left untreated, the symptoms of ADHD can persist, resulting in ongoing inattention, impulsiveness and hyperactivity in adulthood. The condition is thought to affect up to 5% of children and 2% of adults. This means ADHD affects almost 5 million adults and 4 million children in the US alone, with millions more affected worldwide. Unfortunately, around 80% of adult ADHD sufferers remain undiagnosed and unaware of their condition. ADHD creates daily challenges for sufferers, impacting their daily lives. Symptoms frequently result in workplace problems, resistance to authority, and in some cases, increased criminality. Some studies have shown that up to 40% of the male prison inmates suffer from ADHD. So who gets ADHD? Most new diagnoses of ADHD are made between the ages of 6 and 12 years. Why ADHD occurs is not really understood. Researchers have suggested the condition results from abnormal brain biochemistry, plus an over or underdevelopment of regions within the brain. What we do know is that ADHD tends to run in families. For around 80%, a clear genetic link exists. You are, therefore, more likely to develop ADHD where a parent or sibling has the condition. You may also be at increased risk if you were born premature, your mother has used drugs, alcohol or tobacco during pregnancy, or you've experienced a brain injury. Three quarters of patients with ADHD will have a coexisting second mental health condition, such as autism. So what are the other symptoms of ADHD? Symptoms of ADHD are largely noticeable in children before the age of six. Concerns are usually raised by teachers or parents. The symptoms of ADHD can be broadly separated into three categories. First is hyperactivity. This usually manifests itself as restlessness, with individuals being unable to sit still and are often seen fidgeting. Children may also struggle to play quietly. Next is impulsiveness. Due to the impulsive nature of ADHD, sufferers may act without thinking and without consideration for danger. They may find it difficult to wait their turn, interrupting others or even talking excessively. And third, inattention. Short attention spans and being easily distracted are common features. This often results in careless mistakes during work or in school time. Teachers or employers may interpret this as being unable to listen or complete tasks which are labelled boring or tedious. Individuals may flit between activities and tasks that are given to them. And they may be perceived as being forgetful, regularly losing their personal items. For children, ADHD symptoms can result in poor academic achievement and they may appear to lack respect for authority and even experience challenges with social interactions. So how can ADHD be diagnosed? If you believe that you or your child are suffering from ADHD, you should discuss your concerns with your regular doctor. 
In the first instance, your primary care physician or your GP may recommend a period of observation. Parental classes focusing on managing ADHD behaviour in children can also be useful in early stages and are recommended. Attending doesn't make you a bad parent, it means you are supporting your child's development in ways that will work for both of you. A referral to a specialist for a formal assessment will be required for those with persisting symptoms. Before your appointment, you may be asked to complete a Connors questionnaire. The Connors questionnaire is designed to evaluate yours or your child's behaviour, work or schoolwork and social life. This questionnaire indicates whether you or your child are likely to suffer from ADHD or potentially indicate the presence of an alternative mental health condition. ADHD management usually combines psychotherapy plus medication, as directed by your specialist. Psychostimulants form the backbone of pharmaceutical treatment. They aim to promote balancing of the abnormal brain biochemistry as seen with ADHD. They come in two groups, amphetamines, this dexamphetamine, which is first line in this group, and methylphenidates, which includes methylphenidate, again first line. Psychotherapy is effective in helping you better understand your ADHD, and Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, CBT, provides the techniques and helps develop skills to better control your symptoms. For families, group therapy can be beneficial. Here, family members can learn to provide support, plus the means for dealing with their own stresses too. For children, a supportive learning environment is essential to support their progress through school. This requires close involvement and collaboration with their teachers. More recently, questions have surfaced regarding the role of fish oil supplements in the management of ADHD. Whilst positive results have been demonstrated, this tends to be isolated to children with omega-3 deficiencies and therefore is not recommended for all. Of course, more research is obviously needed to clarify the situation. For now, sticking to a healthy balanced diet plus plenty of exercise is always going to be recommended. So what about the prognosis? For most cases, we know that the symptoms improve once children reach puberty. However, there are some people amongst whom the symptoms will persist into adulthood. Given the sheer number of people with ADHD and many of them being undiagnosed, and the significant impact this condition can have, programs providing education and increased awareness are very important. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and interact with us by giving us a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below. By doing this, you help support the growth of our channel and our mission to help educate as many people about their medical conditions as possible and hopefully improve their quality of life. Of course, this video does not provide any individual medical advice and is intended for information purposes only. Do not consider this as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Please don't ignore professional medical advice in seeking treatment because of something you've heard here. If you believe you may have a medical emergency, immediately call your doctor or ambulance service.